These players took different approaches to the format, no doubt about it. Yellow Hat, or as he's known, Yellow What? And company uh, have gotten different takes on the mid-range decks where his opponent, Ken Yukihiro, not even close. He just went full aggression. Right, and we already saw this matchup. We saw Mardu Knights going up against Simic Food, Yellow Hat playing the same deck as William Huey Jensen, and Ken Yukihiro made pretty quick work of William Huey Jensen, so, you know, it's just really, really difficult, especially when you're fighting against the, the Simic deck. The Simic deck doesn't really have a lot of good instant speed interaction. So if Ken gets off to that quick start and is able to put that Ember Cleave onto something, it's going to be really, really tough for Yellowhead to have any answers. Yeah, and he's really, you know, Ken has built his deck to maximize on Ember Cleave in every way possible. Specifically, you see the four copies of Rotting Regisaur in his main deck. That is a power combo with Ember Cleave crashing in for eight power of double strike and trample even you know it's kind of built to run over zombies but it doesn't really matter what you put in front of it it's still just going to bash you yeah definitely and another thing that we saw that was so crucial in this specific matchup was just the access what was the sideboard cards that ken yukahiro had access to noxious grasp i think is just a fantastic card especially in this field with so many forests running around and that in conjunction with ingress rampage means that ken's deck doesn't really care that much about Oko. After Cyborg, he has plenty of answers. That's something that we haven't seen in a lot of other decks because we just really haven't seen a lot of black decks uh, over the course of day two. This is turning out really nice. It was a mulligan here for Yukihiro, but he has a good opening draw, even after have to put the, uh, the Paragon back on the bottom of his library, crunching in for three damage here on turn two. Yeah. And... Nasif, with, with a fairly slow start, he really wow. needs to have a quick start. He wants to get a Gilded Goose or, or a Paradise Druid in play, but nothing over the, over the first two turns. So this is going to yeah. be very tough. This is a, in, in Oko we trust type draw here because he's going to need every bit of both of those Okos if he's going to survive. Because Ken can just slam Rotting Registor, and that kind of forces the issue. Play Oko, turn it into an Elk, or you're going to be in a world of hurt. Right, but at the same time, look at all the pressure that's still on the battlefield, right? You're turning the Rotting Registor into still a pretty effective three-power creature, and we have Fervent Champion, Knight of the Ebon Legion, and a 3-3. On top of that, he's got a Rimrock Knight in hand, too. So, I mean, how is Gabriel Nassif going to follow this up? Also curious to see what Ken does with regards to whether he gives any attention to Oko or if he's just going to focus on the life total. And by the way, a land next turn, an untapped land for Nasif next turn is critical. Like, he has four drop, four drop, four drop, and a Hydroid Crisis. Sure, he could run out of Paradise Druid. It's not nothing, but uh, you got to feel like he might be too far behind at that point. So Rotting Registor is going to get downgraded to a 3-3, but that's still six power plus the ability to pump the Knight just sitting on the battlefield right now. Yeah, Ken can choose... To Ken has the ability to pump Knight of the Ebon Legion, mm -hmm. attack, of course, with all the creatures. So that would be seven, eight, nine, along with the Rimrock Knight. Yeah. That's 11 damage. So he's probably just going to ignore the Oko here yeah. because that's going to put Nasif down to three. Look at that main phase pump, my Knight of the Ebon Legion. Going to Rimrock Knight on the main, too? No. So let's see what he does. He is going to kill Oko. Remember, the Fervent Champion will pump up Knight of the Ebon Legion as well. And he's splitting up the attacks. And this is nice because Ken is still going to be able to get that counter on that Knight of the Ebon Legion, which will be huge. Uh -huh. It's actually a big question as to whether or not he's going to run out that Rim uh, use that Rimrock Knight for additional damage because there's a really good chance that Nasif is... You know, one of the ways Nasif wins here is if he goes land Wicked Wolf. And by keeping up the Rimrock Knight, you at least ensure that you will have the Knight of the Ebon Legion trade with the Wicked Wolf oh. if it comes into play in fights. Yeah, he can use Boulder Rush to give plus two, plus zero. But it was a land. It's a tap land, though, for Nasif. He finds Temple of Mystery. And this one could be slipping away from him. He put that card on the bottom. Yeah, this is a lethal attack, so, oh. Oh, and there's an inspiring veteran as well to help pump up the team. And with that untapped land, that means the Knight of the Ebon Legion can also get pumped up. Fast and furious here for Ken Yukihiro. No room for Game Deceive to breathe at all. Yeah, and Ken might just choose to keep this Rimrock Knight back again. 
But I mean, I just don't even see a way for the Sif to get out of this. He's going to be taking so much damage this turn. Right, he can only do one thing, right? I mean, yeah. that's the problem. Even if it's a questing beast, one of his best cards, it's just not enough. And Ken is just going to run out Rimrock Knight here as a 4-2, it's getting wow. pumped, and that is going to do it. Nassif closes his eyes for a minute and says, this is not how I wanted this to go. But Ken's like, well, this is why I brought my deck. Yeah, It's exactly what he's trying to do. And this is exactly what we saw in the previous match where Ken was paired up against William Jensen playing the exact same deck. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff here, too, from Ken. I, I was actually waiting all week to see how he sideboarded, because <laughs> playing the deck myself, I'm like, well, what am I supposed to take out here, right? Like, every, every card seems pretty integral to the strategy, but immediately he jumps in and brings in four Angrath's Rampage and four Noxious Grass. So he's doing some pretty extensive sideboarding here, and it looks like it's a combination of Steel Claw Lance and Inspiring Veteran that he's taken out. Yeah, Noxious Grasp just... I'm pretty sure it just kills everything. It just kills everything. It just kills everything in the Sieve's deck. So the Planeswalkers, the creatures, everything. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The Angrath's Rampage is kind of interesting. And if you're on the Simic side of things, I mean, how many good answers do you have to the Rotting Registrar? I think the best answer is just turning it into a 3 thief. That might be the only good solution that the Sieve has in his configuration. And as you saw, it you know, well, that obviously it's better than facing down a 7-6. I'd still be down for a bunch of damage that yeah. game. Huh. By the way, a little bit of a bigger picture look at where the tournament's at. We've got 14 players left with a positive record, so that's a 3-2 or better coming into the round here. And I got to tell you, Paul, the field is stacked from here on out. 11 of those players are in the MPL. The other three are Stan Sifka. He's a PT champ. Gabe Nassif, who we're watching here, is in the Hall of Fame, and Kenji Egashira. <laughs> I mean, th this wow. is, yes, this is not going to be easy to A, make the top eight, and B, to take this thing down tomorrow. Gilded Goose, though, to kick things off for Nassif. Yeah, and this That's is a much better. Yeah, this is a much, much better start for Gabriel Nassif. Really wanted that land because he wants, he has the, the Hydra and the Wicked Wolf in hand, but getting those Gilded Geese out in play early is nice. On top of that, can you go here with a, with a much slower start here, right? No one drop, nope. And, uh, you know, probably gonna just use the Angrass Rampage here to get that Oko off the battlefield. Yeah, now that isn't bad though, right? Yeah. I mean, considering how difficult it is, even for a deck like Ken's to actually attack Oko's loyalty down to zero, this is pretty good, a clean answer for Oko. Yeah, but Nassif's now going to be able to just continue making food here. Yep. That Wicked Wolf is going to be very difficult to get off the battlefield. Uh, you know, Angrass Rampage won't work with the Gilded Geese in play. Well, you know what? Rotting Registor isn't bad, though, right? Yeah. It's like, what are you going to do? Fight that with your Wicked Wolf? You know, even the Voracious Hydra has a hard time getting big enough to, to tussle with the Registor. He, he actually can here because if he does play the Forest, I mean, that's three food, right? So he can actually play the Wicked Wolf sacrifice all three food to, to keep it alive. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's six. <laughs> now that will it's leave a hungry it, wolf. That would leave it vulnerable to Noxious Grasp, so that's probably something that Nassif is thinking about here. Mm -hmm. Do I want to sacrifice all my food to get this Riding Registrar off the battlefield? Because if he does, he does know that Ken Yukuhiro is packing the full four copies. Doesn't seem like there's a much better option here anyways. The Aether Gust isn't doing anything here. The Voracious Hydra, I suppose he could he could choose to make a an 8-9, mm -hmm. which would also still leave yourself vulnerable to a Noxious yeah. Grasp. Oh, uh, it's so tempting to just have this huge thing that can brick wall future rotting Registors, but yeah, no way. As it turns out, it would kind of work well here. Yep, and he, it looks like he's going for it here. Also, Nassif has the luxury here. You know, you look at the food going away, and you're thinking, well, is this really that great for him? But he's at 20. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Cancel that order. He did not sacrifice any food. I see. Okay, so now he does have basically the option of chump locking for a long time. And by keeping the Rotting Registrar in play, it does represent kind of a ticking clock for Ken Yukuhiro because Rotting Registrar forces you to discard a card every single turn. And with three food in play, he has plenty of ways to chump. Now, there is a little more risk there, however, because Ken Yukuhiro is playing Ember Cleave. So that combination of Rotting Registrar plus Ember Cleave is, is a huge swing in life points. However, Gabriel Nassif does have the two 
Gilded Goose in play, which you can use to cast the Ether Gust if Ken Yuka Hero chooses to move in with the Ember Cleave. Yeah, and of course, you know, he's not going to be able to cast it this turn <clears throat> anyway. So Nasif knows, okay, I've got this one window where I can't get Ember Cleaved. Then I can untap, have Ether Gust, which he technically has available now, but it would cost him quite a bit. So interesting stuff. Nasif trying to get maximum value here uh, from, from his opponent's Rotting Regisaur. And it looks like it's going to work here because a Rimrock Knight got discarded, can cast one as well. Remember, the acclaimed contender only triggers if you control another knight, so running that out didn't make a lot of sense either. And, you know, the, the card that's really impressed me this weekend, well, number one is Nyssa, <laughs> mm -hmm. but number two is the Wicked Wolf, and just, just how sticky of a threat it is and how difficult it is to deal with once you have a few food in play. There's just not a whole lot you can do to interact uh, with it. There really isn't, and it, it tends to shine in multiple matchups as well. Sure, maybe not against Golos, which has been a headliner here, but against traditional control decks, against uh, aggro decks, and against mid-range decks, it just doesn't have a bad mode. Right. So Nassif with a, a few options here. He can just choose to pass and make a ton of food with the Gilded Goose while leaving up the Aether Gust. He can also choose to run out of Voracious Hydra. Yeah, if, if he doesn't use the Gilded Goose, he can still make a 3-4 that would eat the Rimrock Knight. He, alternatively, he can also just choose to make a gigantic Hydra if he wants. Yeah, at this point, you know, I think this is the turn now where Nassif has to really respect the possibility of Ember Cleave. You know, I don't think passing is a horrible option here. Mm -hmm. By passing, you just give yourself that so Wicked Wolf just food. becomes gigantic, <laughs> and you still have the option to cast Aether Gust. Yeah, it's a lot of food. It's becoming a bit of a buffet on the Seif side of the battlefield if he goes for that line. No, it looks like he is actually going to go for the Voracious Hydra here, Paul. And he still left himself the ability if he'd like to cast Aether Gust. Now, it would gobble up two food, so it's not ideal, but hey, it's better than letting an Ember Cleave hit. Okay, another card's gonna go away to the Rotting Registor. Without that Knight on there, the Acclaimed Contender looks a lot worse, so Yukihiro's gonna get rid of it. Immediately punished, of course. He draws the one drop <laughs> Fervent Champion. Yeah, but now Ken has to find a way to attack, and he just doesn't have a good attack here no. with the Wicked Wolf and all that food in play. Yeah, he just ends up trading his Rotting Registrar for a bunch of food. And Nasif just has the backup in case an Ember Cleave is drawn off the top. There is that Aether Gust in his hand, so, you know, Nasif oh, is just going to pull further and further ahead. Rotting Registrar just making Ken just discard all of the other cards in his hand. He's down, like, at this point, two or three cards. This is nice, too. A Voracious Hydra off the top for Nasif means that he can basically just run back last turn, but this time he'll have two, three, four blockers, which actually match up well against Rotting Regisaur. Right. That's six power, eight toughness, meaning he can just put the double block in front of the Rotting Regisaur to, to, to block. A little bit risky if you might anticipate your opponent having something like a Noxious Grasp. Mm, for sure. All right, there's Voracious Hydra number two. Just as we mentioned, it's a 3-4. Can uh, send Javier packing. Thanks for, stopping, thanks for stopping by, buddy. And let's see what Ken draws. He's not going to have Angrass Rampage anymore because Regisaur is going to make that go away. And it's a Rimrock Knight. Yeah, it's, this is super tough for Ken at this point because, I mean, he's basically playing off the top of his deck, and it's not like he can look to fill up a hand for a huge turn with the Rotting Register. He just has to run out everything that he draws at this point. Yeah. And now Nassif, who has been stable for multiple turns, is truly in a great position. Now he can start Gilded Goose production on high volume. Oh, absolutely. Not, and remember, we haven't seen it that often, but you can sack the food for some life. Yes. Right? So, so he, he, you know, it's gonna, there's going to be a point where he's just like, you know what, I can maybe even take a hit with yep. an Ember Cleave. Yeah which is not a luxury you normally have. Right. But here we go. The Gilded Geese going off. Now five food. 
And even though we were at a stalemate here, this just has to benefit Nassif. Yeah, he has far more powerful options here that he can draw. And by the way, Wicked Wolf just dominated this entire game. Right. It just completely brick walled a 3 3, a lowly 3 3, brick walling a 7 6 dinosaur. Yeah, or in this case, two of them. Unbelievable. And here we go. The food factory is rolling. Seven food now for Nassif. And another land off the top. All right. And with seven food, Nassif says, all right, let's get this Wicked Wolf rolling. <laughs> of course, he knows that Ken is on zero cards. Nothing to fear here. And he's just going to get a clock on him. Yeah, can probably put him on a two-turn clock here and start forcing chump blocks yeah. from Rotting Regisaur. Yeah, he, he'll either go to six or up to nine, either a two- or a three-turn clock, depending on how he sees fit. I would guess that he's probably just going to go for the nine here, just because he can just make two more food this turn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. And not only that, Ken just has no cards in hand, right? It's right. not like he was sandbagging a removal spell and was waiting for an opportunity to cast two of them at the same time. And this adds up very quickly here as well, because remember, the Rimrock Knight can't block, so it's going to be chump with Regisaur at some point. He went for eight, which might look a little funny, but remember, he can also just do two additional to right, get Right, exactly. Registore triggers go on the stack, but they don't do anything with no card in hand. And this is probably the last relevant draw step here for Yukihiro. So game three incoming, well played by Nassif. And I'll point out here, he never even needed to use the Aether Gust. He just had it in his hand. Yeah. He had it as a backup because there are just so few ways to interact with that Embercleave combo. Sometimes it's going to be stranded in your hand. It's not going to do a whole lot. But you just need to have it because if you don't, you're just you have that chance of just dying. And by the way, back to the Wicked Wolf, it came down, killed a creature, prevented any attacks for the duration of the game, and then killed Ken. <laughs> is, is, is that a good card? Or? It's like it did every single thing that game. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the important thing for Nassif is just he needs that, that quick start again. He cannot afford to keep those hands with just a, a, a turn three play, like in Oko. He absolutely has to have either Gilded Goose or the, or the Paradise Druid in his opener. Yeah, Gilded Goose was critical that game as well. We don't want to sell it short. Ramping out stuff quickly. And then, of course, providing the food later that did enable the attack. So really nice draw there from the Seif and well navigated as well. We should also point out, I mean, he finished that game at 20. Like, yeah. just Ken never had anything going. Two extremely one-sided games so far. I'll remind you, by the way, these players are both four and one. And with a fifth win, that is a top eight. So I know if you look at the screen, the players might look like they're in full business mode. That's because they are. Everything on the line here for these two. Now, if they do pick up a loss here, though, they're not eliminated from the tournament. They'll get to come back next round and play again. So how is this opener here? It looks like no one drop, but some stuff. Yeah, he's got the Paradise Druid. He can find a Gilded Goose here. Or, yeah, or land. either would be good here. He just needs to make sure he can develop his board. He's got that turn two Paradise Druid. And Ken Yukuhiro doesn't have a one drop. Yep. The one thing about Ken's deck is he only has eight one drops in his deck. So, you know, um, the other night variants that we saw from Ben Stark and Eric Froelich, they played 16. So big difference here. It's not that unusual that Ken doesn't have that one drop. Yeah, that was a priority for the other night variants right. that we saw for sure, is getting those one drops down to be maximum aggression. Ken's going for a little bit more of a combo for instead. So here's Black Lance Paragon on the battlefield during Nassif's turn, who played a Paradise Druid. Then we should see an acclaimed contender here. Yeah, he's going to play it first main phase so that he doesn't get blocked <laughs> and not have the trigger. He's going to take the cheaper option, the Fervent Champion, and offer the trade. Generally speaking, Nassif's deck is very interested in keeping these mana creatures on the battlefield, so Ken would probably be quite happy with the trade here. And Nassif is going to have to make the always tough decisions about what he wants to do. It's just so tempting to just go, I'll take the three. Because once you get to four mana with this deck, it gets out of hand. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Ken's really, sorry, Nassif 
is, is really on the back foot here. He wants to run at that Wicked Wolf, but he doesn't have a food in place, so he's not going to get a profitable trade. If anything, it's just going to be a one-for-one, one, which isn't a great feeling here against these creatures specifically. So, you know, if he does want to make sure that Wicked Wolf stays on the battlefield, then he's going to have to run out an Oko. But that means you're just taking a turn off to just play an Oko, which really doesn't do a good job because Ken can just choose to get that Oko off the battlefield. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Oko, make a food, go. Right. Lose Oko. Yep. Not great. But he does decide to trade. Interesting. Gilded Goose was the draw there. Now he has the option to go Gilded Goose, leave up Ether Gust, or he can Oko. I guess he could Hydra, though. It doesn't really do anything here. <laughs> the thing is, if Nasif plays out the Oko, Ken Yuko Hero can still kill it by playing Fervent Champion and Inspiring Veteran, and that'll be enough to get that Oko off the battlefield. Without having to even use the grasp. Wow. Right, yeah, that's going to be an attack for seven. So let's see what Nasif decides he wants to do. That goose might have changed his mind. Goose food, ether gust. Yeah, it's just tough though because the cre the only creature that's on the battlefield right now is a white creature, which yeah. you can't even target with the ether gust. Yeah, he does know about fervent champion, but right. eh, yeah, using right. ether gust on the fervent champion is yeah. not really where you want to be necessarily. All right, not exciting play if you're sitting in the thief seat. And Nassif, I mean, he still really wants to draw another land here because he doesn't want to use the mana generated, sorry, the, excuse me, the food generated from the Gilded Goose to cast the Wicked Wolf. He wants that food in play to have the option of making the Wicked Wolf indestructible. Look at this rotting register off the top of the library now for Ken. So he's got options too. Yeah, a lot of, lot of options. And I think if you're on Ken's side, the card that you're going to be most concerned about next turn is land Wicked Wolf. Mm. So Ken will definitely be mindful of this and just look to navigate his board so that if the Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield, he, he'll have some answer for it. Wow, so many options for him. He can use up all of his mana here in a few different ways. Ken also, of course, will be uh, very aware of the possibility of Ether Gust and how that might affect things. Bare minimum, though, he has a contender to start slamming. And he's going to do that part first. So, crunches in for three. And yeah, he's just going to go Regisaur, and then does he run out the champion as well? No, he's going to keep the land in hand to discard wow. to running Regisaur. Okay. Oh, Ken, we get to see some he good needed stuff the land. here. Oh, no land. That was really big. Gabriel Nassif really, really wanted land number four there so he could run out oh. the Wicked Wolf, eat the Acclaimed Contender, sacrifice the food, and still keep that Wicked Wolf in play. Yeah, he can still cast the Wicked Wolf, but the food will be gone. So, so he's going to have to build up his food stocks here. He's going to cast Oko. Now, probably just have to shrink down the register like we saw last game, or the first game, I should say. Right. But again, that wasn't great, right? I mean, he ended up losing to it. Tough spot here for Nassif. He was definitely trying to use a one-time on that. You, the truth is you get more than one one-time. That's the good news. Oh, dear. Okay, he's going to make a blocker here. Again, he likes to try to leverage Rotting Registor against his opponent. Curious to see if this backfires on him. Ooh. Ooh, double Noxious Grass. Now, he can only cast one. Right, as the Tournament Grounds only taps for black mana for your knights or, or your equipment. equipment yeah. Yeah. And he does actually run black equipment in this deck, although I think he took them all out. Yeah, the Steel Call Lances, I believe, have been sideboarded out. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to kick things off with Inspiring Veteran. That gets the Acclaim Contender bigger than the animated food token. And a big attack here from Ken Yukihiro, slamming for 11 against Gabriel Nassif. Just no good blocks. Are you just supposed to take it here? I mean, blocking with either creature just feels so bad. Yeah, realistically. Maybe a chump block with the Gilded he, Goose on the Rotting uh, Regisaur. That is rough. No great options here for Gabriel Nassif. And Nassif knows it. He's trying to figure out the optimal blocks, but boy, Ken Yukihiro with the big pressure. 
Yeah, the problem is once you get down to six, if you choose not to block, then any creature with Emberclay will basically kill you, yeah. not just Rotting Registrar. You don't need that combo anymore. And the Thief's mana is taxed. It's going to be really hard for him to keep up that Aether Gust. And you saw that Ken kept that land in hand, then played the land post-combat and took out Oko with the Noxious Grasp. That shuts down the food engine once again. Gilded Goose doesn't do anything, and the Wicked Wolf too. Right, so now Nasif's, I think, only option here is to run out the Wicked Wolf, kill the Inspiring Veteran, and then he will have two 3-3s three in play and uh, hope for the best, go wow. for that double block on the Riding Registrar. But we know that Ken Yukuhiro has that Noxious Grasp in hand. Feels bad, man. Yeah. That is not where you want to be. Of course, Wicked Wolf the absolute all-star of game number two, but it does need support. Yeah, Aether Gust is just not a great use of your mana. You're not going to be able to play anything else. The only thing you can target is an Inspiring Veteran. So the option really is Voracious Hydra or Wicked Wolf, but the Wicked Wolf is bigger because it does have that three power. This gives you the option of the double block. And this is one of those situations where Nasif simply just can't play around it. No. He's just going to have to go for the double block and hope for the best. Yep. That's all he can really do. Ken discards the Fervent Champion to keep Noxious Grasp at the ready, but he's got a decent little attack here. Yeah, Ken's just going to swing in with both of these creatures. I see, because if, if somehow Nassif decides that it's okay to double block the Regisaur, then he gets the full blowout. Right. And otherwise, he'd be fine trading the Contender for either of the other creatures. I suppose Nassif can... Put a 3-3 in front of the Claim Contender and then put uh, another creature in front of the Rotting Registrar. This at least guarantees that you'll get one of the creatures off the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to have to deal with the Registrar, which maybe there's a chance you can do that. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah. If, that, but, but if that's the case, then Ken can also just hold uh, onto the Noxious Grasp. But okay. Nassif just says, look, the only way I'm going to realistically get out of this mess is with the double block. And oh, it looks like he's backed up a little here. I mean, if he does go for the double block... It's super We're tough. We're kind of done here, right? I mean, realistically, he'll be left with uh, a Gilded Goose versus an Acclaimed Contender and a Rotting Registrar with Nassif at three? Yeah, I mean... Not impossible, know, but th 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 There's a chance, right? Because if, he, if Nassif does draw a land, he can run out the Nissa who shakes the world, make a 3-3, three, three, have the 3-3 three, three trade with the Acclaimed Contender, and then chump block with the Gilded Goose, yep. and then maybe top deck another card. So there is a sequence of draws, but of course, that would also be hoping that Ken can whiffs. Uh, he does have it, though, as you see Nassif recognize the fact that he was hoping wasn't true. Land? But it is. Pass the turn back, and it is once upon a time. In your opening hand, oftentimes, yeah, that would count as a land. Here, not so much. Unfortunately, here for Nassif, also the Aether Gust is turned off. Only black and white creatures on the other right. side. Otherwise, he could go Voracious Hydra Four for zero. <laughs> and then Aether Gust, one of the other creatures. He could do oh, something. All right. Another and claim contender. Probably one of the better draws outside of Embercleave here. And look at this. Rimrock Knight and an inspiring veteran. He can cast either. Rimrock Knight is, seems pretty reasonable. It's here. lethal because it does allow him to attack with that acclaimed contender and attack through the Voracious Hydra and they would trade. Oh, sure, sure. He can actually just use Boulder Rush. Now that would work out beautifully here for Ken yeah. as it would be exiled and the red No Sword discard, right? Sword. Yeah, beautiful stuff. So in it comes. And Nassif makes the only blocks he can. Yeah. Do you see the smile on his face? He's taking it in stride, but he can't be happy about the way that this has gone. Bang, bang, still alive for one more draw so this step. This is two lethal attackers. I just don't see a way out of this. He finds land number five, finally. But Nissa, who shakes the world, animate a land is not <laughs> enough. And he looks to the sky. He's heartbroken. Don't worry, though, Nassif fans. He gets another shot next round. He's just thinking, what are his outs if he casts once upon a time? How can I block both of these creatures? Yeah, he's going to do it. Yeah. He knows he's dead if he casts right. Nissa, so let's see what he finds. I guess if he finds a Gilded Goose, he can play it, block Rotting, rotting Registrar, and then, and then sack, sack the, the food, food. Yeah. gain three life. Look at Ken. He's like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it is... Not quite enough. Piece. Almost. No. That's still just one creature. With right. one more land, it would have been two. And we might have had a, a 
a discussion point here, but instead, he doesn't have it. And Ken Yukihiro is going to lock up another top eight here in Southern California. Both creatures in, and Rotting Regisaur finishes the job. Ken Yukihiro is into the top eight. Yeah, and uh, this deck, I mean, he didn't even have to draw the Embercleave, right? He still just had the option of, look, this deck just has a nice mana curve. Rotting Registor is just nearly impossible to beat in a fight. And if you just simply don't have the removal spells to deal with it, you're just going to be in a lot of trouble. I wonder if he boarded him out, some of them. The Rotting Registors? No, the Ember Cleaves. Like, it is actually kind of a liability, right, if you get hit by Aether Gust. I'm just wondering if he if he even considers that or if it's just too core to what the deck's it's doing. It's a possibility, but I think you want to keep it in with the Registor. That's a, that's just a match made in that, heaven. That is the one-two punch that you want. Ken Yukihiro is with Becca Scott right now. That's right. Thanks,